Three phase induction motors are the most common motors in industrial wool. They are self starting, reliable, and economical. Today, Electrical Engineering Planet will go through how to read the nameplate of induction motor according to IEC standard. Consider subscribing to Electrical Engineering Planet channel to support our community. First of all, we have to differentiate between two standards while we are dealing with induction motors. NEMA standard, which you'll find in North America and small sections around the globe. IEC standard, which you'll find in most countries in the world. In induction motors, there are common factors between NEMA and IEC standards, but other factors are unique in only one of the two standards. Today, we will cover how to read induction motor nameplate in IEC standard. We will take some examples to understand every single factor. The first example will be a 22 kW 3 phase induction motor from VEM Motors manufacturer. Let's take a close look at the nameplate which is mounted on the motor. At the beginning, there are factors related to manufacturers. First factor on the top here is the name of the manufacturer and the logo. Also, the manufacturing country. Second factor here is type of motor. Some other manufacturers call it model number or product ID. This factor is specific for this motor type. You can use it to ask for buying the same motor or buying spare parts. Third factor is serial number which is a unique identifier for your motor. You can use this number to check the history of your motor in the manufacturer's database. Here, this factor tells us that we are using here IEC standard. Here, we have the output mechanical power of this motor, which is 30 horsepower or 22 kilowatt. We all know that one horsepower equal to roughly 0.74 kilowatt. The rated line to line voltage here is equal to 400 volt plus or minus 10%. Also, you have to connect it in delta configuration. Be careful with motors voltages and connections relation. Here for example, you have to connect your motor with this voltage input in case of star connection only. If you try to connect it in delta, this will cause harmful effect on the insulation of the motor. Let's get back to our nameplate. The full load current is equal to 38.5 ampere and the power supply frequency is equal to 50 hertz plus or minus 5%. Here we have a power factor or cosine phi at full load which is equal to 0.9. The rotor speed is equal to 2,935 RPM. This value is near to 3,000 RPM, which is the synchronous speed of the motor. We can deduce the number of poles of this motor. Using this equation, P is equal to 120 times frequency over synchronous speed. So P will equal to 120 times 50 Hertz over 3000 RPM, which will equal to 2 poles. This factor is called the insulation class, which describes the ability of the motor winding insulation to handle heat, which can affect motor's insulation lifetime. Insulation factor has 4 classes, A, B, F, H. So here in our case, our motor insulation class is F which means that the maximum temperature that the windings can withstand is 155 degrees Celsius. IP stands for ingress protection, which have two numbers. The first number describes the protection level against solids and dust. The second number describes the protection level against water and moisture. Motor weight is equal to 173 kg. On the top 
In the right, we have the International Efficiency Classes, IE1, Standard Efficiency, IE2, High Efficiency, IE3, Premium Efficiency, IE4, Super Premium Efficiency. We can use this table to calculate the full load efficiency of your motor with the help of the output power and number of poles. In our case, we have 22 kilowatt, two poles and IE2. So the efficiency will equal to 91.3 percentage. As you know, efficiency is equal to the output mechanical power over the input electrical power. We have another important factor, which is frame size. Frame size describes the dimension of our motor. For example, H is the distance from the base to the middle of the motor shaft. B is distance between holes. In some motors, you will find this frame size inside motor type. In other motors, you will find it in separate sections. In our case, motor frame size is 180M. IM V1 is the mounting arrangement factor, which describes the way to mount the motor. It could be foot mounted, or flange mounted, or both. Also horizontal or vertical. In our case, IM V1 is large flange mounted vertical. These factors are related to motor bearings. This one is type of drive end bearing and non-drive end bearing. This one is how much greasing you inject to the bearing using grease gun after specific running hours. Another factor is type of grease you should use. In our example, we should inject 55 gram every 2000 running hours. In other motors, you may find bearing and greasing factors in a separate nameplate. Another factor I have to show it up is duty cycle which describes if the motor can run continuously 24 hours, 365 days, or short time duty, or intermittent periodic duty. Another important factor that we didn't mention it yet is service factor, which describes how much overload that the motor can handle for a short period during normal conditions. So for example here, service factor is 1.15. This means that the motor can withdraw 15% more than the full load current. You'll find explosion proof factor in hazardous working areas, like mines and oil and gas sites. This factor describes if the motor will be used inside mines or not, also illustrate zone classes, the atmosphere is gas or dust, the protection type, the maximum permissible surface temperature of the equipment classes, and the failure levels. Also, in the future, we will hit most of these factors in much more detailed descriptions. Next Thursday questions, we will learn how to connect induction motor in direct online way. Feel free to check the resources in the description down below. Consider subscribing to Electrical Engineering Planet channel. Also, don't forget to share, like, and let the knowledge enlighten your world. Thanks for watching.